everybody and welcome to it's our podcast i'm already a little bit flustered we've got an incredible guest today i'm chris as always your host today wow like i say amazing the, the, the lady i've got today doesn't really need an introduction all i'm gonna say is it's not every day that you get to speak to miss wrestlemania so it is <laughs> it is of course the one and only vicky guerrero vicky thank you so much for joining me how are you today Yes, me! Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would start like that. Really hoping you would. Um, how are you? How how are things on on your end? How are things now that life's getting back to normal a little bit more? Yeah, you know, I live in Texas, so we've been open for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. I'm ready for the world to open up so we can start traveling a little bit farther for AEW. Um, but you know, it's, it's all good on our side. I mean, the sun's shining, uh, you know, yeah. it's a great day and I'm speaking to you. So there's not much more I could ask for today. There you go. Perfect. But one end to the day for me, it's only sort of like two o'clock for you now, isn't it? It's actually one cause I'm in Texas. So I'm central time. So I'm at, uh, Eastern time. Behind. So, uh, yeah. yeah, still early in the day. So it's all good. Yeah. I get very confused. There's just too many time zones in the UK. We've got one. One time zone, that's it, nice and easy. Um, yeah, so things are getting back to normal a little bit for us as well, but there's been a bit of a delay. I don't think anybody really knows what's going on with post-COVID. It's all a bit of a mess. Yeah, I know. You know uh, at All Elite Wrestling, we've been uh, talking about doing a, a world tour, and so the UK was one of the names that we have mentioned. So I love London. I love Europe. I love all those great cities over there. So if we get the chance to go back, I went with WWE when I was there. So to go back with AEW would be just a fantasy of mine because I love the country so much. And, um, I, you know, so I'm, I'm hoping that things get back to normal because there's so many fans that we need to go tour and, and, and see for ourselves. Yeah, we've got some of the best fans. Every, every guest that I speak to from the States always says, we've got some of the best fans. We, we can't wait for AEW to come here. I know that you already had plans. I think Fighter Fest was meant to be in yeah. the UK and then obviously the world <laughs> the world just caught on fire and then it ruined everything so um right let's let's get into it I'm glad you mentioned AEW straight away there because I wanted to keep this nice and topical straight away the first question I have to ask I'm wearing one of his t-shirts now Andrade El Idolo how did your partnership with him come about did you did you know in advance that you were going to be working with him and introducing him what, what what do you think he can bring to AEW that maybe he he didn't bring to WWE? Well, I you know from my own personal opinion, um, Andrade El Idolo is just an amazing talent. I mean, so incredibly uh, creative in the ring. Of course, you know with him having such a great legacy in Mexico, um, yeah. it just it's a perfect fit for all elite wrestling. Um, I knew the day of that I was going to be working with him, so I was. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tony Khan, you know, makes all the decisions in all elite wrestling. So when he said, Hey, I have some of you to come meet, you know, and um, when I when we went to the trailer and I saw him, I was just ecstatic. Um, <laughs> I've never met him personally. So to be able to, uh, you know, sit down and talk to him, he's such a polite gentleman and so mm -hmm. humble. And I think that we're just going to have some great times at all elite wrestling. Um, I think she was really underutilized in WWE, and that's just my personal opinion from watching yeah. the product. <laughs> I think but, it's a lot of people's opinion, a lot of people. Uh, you know, and I think that, um, it, you know, there's just a lot of talent in one show, and, uh, you know, that that's just the, the basic recipe, you know, that a lot of promotions face. But I think that he's just going to have a really great time in All Elite Wrestling, number one, because he's working with me, and number two, <laughs> because... There's just a lot of great wrestlers out there that, you know, at all of the wrestling that he's going to be able to have these incredible matches. I mean, first off, you know, he's already working with Kenny Omega, you know, for Triple Mania yeah. in Mexico, which yeah. is, I mean, I would love to go work with him there. That'd be so fantastic in my daily agenda. But, um, you know, we have, we have Pinta and we have Ray Phoenix and um, just like the Young Bucks and, you know, of course, Kenny and, um, you know, just a lot of great wrestlers I know that are dying to uh, work with him. So I think that is going to bring a really um, a great uh, asset, you know, to all elite wrestling. And uh, there's going to be some incredible matches. So I'm, I'm going to be a fan first and then 
be his colleagues, I guess, <laughs> to watch him yeah, in Absolutely. I completely agree. So underutilized. I don't know if maybe it could have been the fact that, you know, he, he struggled with with picking up English. It took him a, a little while to get more confident there. I think people, as, as as much as we knew he was being underutilized, I think everybody was surprised to see him go. And obviously there was a lot of talk about where he was going to end up. Would he go back to Mexico, AW Impact, Ring of Honor, wherever it might be? So you say that you found out literally on the day. That's that's when you met him. Was that the day that he signed? And w- were there any whispers? Did anybody have any ideas? Did you hear any rumors? No, I, I, he was he was kept a top secret, you know. Oh, um, wow. Pretty much, you know, until he debuted that day. Um, you know, something about Andrade and just like any of the other Mexican wrestlers is that they have so much reminders of me when watching Eddie in the ring. And yeah. so to bring that um, that Mexican flair and that love of the lucha wrestling, I am really excited, and I'm I'm looking forward to him, you know, teaming up with you know Pinta and Ray. I think that's just going to be fantastic, you know, to see in the ring. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much a top secret. So when I saw him, I just get instant memories of you know watching Eddie and and just the the history of the Mexican wrestling is just it's going to be renewed again in, at All Elite, and so it's going to be a great time at AEW. Yeah, absolutely. So like you say, there's some dream feuds there. I think Andrade versus Cody would be oh my gosh. Through, the roof, through the roof. That's that's pay-per-view, pay-per-view main event quality. Yeah, right he'll there. only be at pay-per-views. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 okay. um, you know, it, just something that, you know, with Andrade being, um, you know, at WWE, him and Zelina Vega were just incredibly paired together. I mean, she brought so much of, uh, you know, the the complete teaming of both of them together. So, you know, I have to remember that I'm Vicky Guerrero and I have my own style and my own character. And a lot of people are kind of like, well, she's not Zelina and, you know, Zelina isn't Vicky. No, we're not. We're, <laughs> we're two different people. And I think that that's what makes us so unique as managers is that she has her style and I love her to pieces. I think she's incredibly talented. And for me to be able to work with um, Andrade is just going to allow me to create my character as well, you know, along with yeah. him. So I, I'm just really excited. It's, it should be an exciting uh, summer for All Elite Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting you you mentioned managers and, and valets in there. Obviously, you, you're well known for being one, a legendary manager, a legendary valet. Let's be honest, you are. You are. You've managed some top names. You've got your yeah, Edge, Dolph Ziggler, um, Lay Cool, Nyla Rose. Did you prefer being a manager in, in that sense, or did you prefer being general manager of Raw and SmackDown? What what type of manager did you prefer to be? Did you like being at the ring, or did you prefer the backstage side of things? Um, you know, I think with each different character that I worked with, with Edge and Dolph and like Cool and even Nyla, um, everyone has their own story, so to speak. You know, so um, my character kind of evolved with whoever I was working with. Now, when I worked with Edge, I was learning. I mean, I was just into the business and very new. So um, I, I'll always be grateful for Edge to show me so many things in, in psychology and um, how to work around the ring and interact with, you know, the matches. And then when I got to Dolph and like, cool, I was a little more comfortable, you know, being a character at WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I love it all. You know, if you give me a backstage segment or you get me in the ring or you get me a promo on stage, I love it. I mean, anything, anytime I can perform, that's just a way for Vicky Guerrero to get TV time. And that's really important for me, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's just uh, wherever they put me, I just want to give my 100% and to be the best that I can for whoever I'm working with. It's going to be the best segment for that night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you say that you evolved in, into the character and evolved into yourself and developing new characters. But what was it like? What was it like when we first met Vicky Guerrero? Because obviously, we, you know, we, we knew of you. And then all of a sudden you were just thrust onto TV in the middle <laughs> of the, um, the Eddie Ray custody of Dominic storyline something that I very very fondly remember from growing up that was sort of at the peak of when I I really got into wrestling big time what was what was what was it like just coming from a fairly normal life or or was it was it normal being married to Eddie was it was it carnage all the time was it chaos yeah it was I would say chaos and never a dull moment when I was married (laughs) to Eddie um you know (laughs) 
-hmm. performing with Eddie was uh, very comforting to me because he was always taking care of me in the ring and whether it was backstage or uh, whatever we had to do with Ray and uh, Dominic, I wasn't scared at all because I had Eddie by my side. And yep. then, you know, when Eddie passed and then I, I came back to work with Chris Benoit and Ray Mysterio and Chris Jericho and all the great guys in WWE, um, it, it was very terrifying for me because this is not what I did. I mean, what I did with Eddie was very little of the of what the storyline was and I was just a little part of it. Um, but I think just by watching Eddie for so many years and, and watching the product and being a fan of wrestling, I, I guess I kind of grew my own accustomed, you know, what I thought Vicky Guerrero should be. So um, the easiest way was to be a bitch, which every woman can feel <laughs> that their own way. And me being the older woman coming in into WWE when I did, I was the older one compared to some of the superstars I was working with. So to have that cougar character, it all just fit together. And I loved it. I mean, it took a long time for me to uh, know who Vicky Guerrero, the character was and what I was supposed to be doing. But I just had to, uh, Dusty, Dusty Rhodes is the one who said, just be me and don't do anything that I wouldn't do on my own, you know, which made a lot of yeah. sense. So when they gave me something to do or to read, I had to make sure that that was what Vicky Guerrero would say. And so that was a lot easier for me because I just had to be real of what I wanted to do you know, for the fans. Yeah, and being being that bitch character, every every everybody that I've interviewed so far who has had a heel run and a face run have always said it's easy to be a heel because oh, you can yeah. just be yourself. You can just let it all come out and just be the horrible person that you always wanted to be. Did you? Did you? Are you the same? Did you have more fun as a heel? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's easier to piss off a crowd than it is to make them like you. Yeah. Um, I was a baby for like two months at WWE and I was just miserable. I just, there was so much pressure to keep the fans happy and to, uh, you know, to make them, you know, like me all the time. And versus, you know, just being the heel character, it was just so much easier to find a person in the audience and keep that angry face on them the whole time. And <laughs> it was just a lot more fun. And so, uh, I, I I love the heel character in anyone that's in our product, you know, at All Elite or anywhere else. I, I think the heel character is so entertaining and fascinating to me that I draw to them first before the babies. Yeah, two of two of the absolute best heels right now are obviously Roman Reigns and MJF, and you can just tell that they're having fun doing it. And oh, yeah. you know, look look what it's done for Roman. Roman was was a good face. And now look what it's done. His heel turn has just propelled him into even more mega stardom than it than it than it had ever done before. Um, to, still touching on on that whole storyline when you first came in. What do you remember of it being like for um for Dom? Because obviously Dom was really young at the time. Did how yeah. did he cope with that? Did did it ever spill over into real life and people asking him who his dad was or anything like that? Yeah, you know, with Dominic, he was such a natural, just like you know, with my girls, they were all involved with the wrestling, you know, product every Monday and Friday, you know, we we're all watching wrestling. So the kids, Dominic and my girls, it was very easy for them to follow the storylines, especially, you know, when Ray and Eddie were performing, we just, we just kind of followed suit, you know, to enjoy the storyline. So Dominic was, he was incredibly talented and, he, and it shows today of how far he's been, you know, uh, succeeding in the wrestling industry. So uh, to see him, you know, become this, you know, great character on his own, I had no doubts about that because I just saw him as a kid. He wasn't scared of the camera and he followed direction really well. So, um, you know, yeah, that, I think that's just uh, something that was just really easy for him. And I'm really proud of him. And he taught me a lot. I mean, we, we're all learning together, you know, that storyline. So that was something that um, to see how the how he's grown is just incredibly fascinating to me. Yeah, you must you must be thrilled to see him and obviously his, his father, Ray, as tag champions now. That must have been a massive moment, just just a pride for you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think we, we, all, we all sort of knew it was going to come one day. Ray had obviously been quite outspoken, saying that before he retired, he wanted to be champ, uh, a tag champ with his son. Do you still keep in touch with the Mysterios? Are you still as close now as you were before? There's social media. I mean, you know, he's got a busy schedule. And I'm, I've got a plate load of things going on. So it's, it's really hard to, you know, pick up the phone and, you know, talk or whatever, but 
Um, I love his family and I, I'm really incredibly proud of them. So just by social media and watching, you know, on TV, it's, I, I keep up pretty well what's going on. Yeah, brilliant. No, that's lovely to hear. Um, right. Let's talk current day then. Let's talk AEW. First of all, why AEW? Obviously, you're, you're so synonymous with your time in, in WWE. Was it just a case you wanted to do something different, try something new, work with different people? Did you ever speak to anybody in WWE about maybe going there or Vince or anybody like that? Well, you know, I, last time I was at uh, WWE, it was for the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. And then yeah. I was there at Evolution. And I asked WWE quite a few times, you know, is there anything... I can do, do y'all see me maybe doing a return for a little bit or returning as my character? And I never had a response. And, you know, mm -hmm. and at that time uh, I left WWE on my own because I was continuing my college education and I wanted to do the medical field. That was, that's always been my dream. And I got to do that. I was working in doctor's offices and I got my bachelor's in healthcare administration. So I was, I was really happy because I was able to do other things on my to-do list. Um, and then I started doing comic cons and signings. Um, and then when I was watching all elite wrestling on TV as a fan, and I love the product, I love how creative they were. And the characters, um, you know, MJF was one of my biggest uh, draws that I would watch all the time. And there was Chris Jericho and um, the inner circle. So there was just a lot of cool things going on in the show that I really um, enjoyed. And when, uh, WWE and I weren't speaking anymore because since I went to All Elite for just a guest uh, appearance, uh, WWE told me that I was not allowed to interview their characters or their roster for my podcast. So it was just a mutual understanding that they didn't want to talk to me and you know I, I wasn't being used over there. And, and I just kind of departed ways with respect and said, you know, that's just the way things go. And so when I went to All Elite Wrestling, it took quite a while because I was still, um, you know, working and I had other projects going on. Uh, but when I was, you know, I got to see the all elite, uh, roster on the Chris Jericho cruise and I just fell in love with all of them. And Tony Khan was just amazing and so incredibly nice to me and, uh, to meet the women on my podcast, you know, and to interview them. It's just a great group of people that just really respect each other. And the way Tony Khan puts family before the wrestling is something that spoke volumes to me. Um, you know, like right now we're off for two weeks, you know, and it's just yeah. Tony really emphasizes on having family, you know, time spent well and to have the guys go home and rest and, and to just kind of take a break from the long schedule because we're going to start traveling in July, you know, each week. So I just, you know, I see how he, he has that respect for the wrestlers and backstage, you know, Tony and I just, I, I love him to pieces. He's a great boss. And it's not just because he's my boss. He really has a lot of fun back there. And Tony Khan is the first promoter that I've seen when we have a house show or even taping or a live audience, Tony goes out there and thanks the audience for coming and wants everyone to have a good time and to, you know, and just, have fun. And that's something that just resonated with me that Tony really loves the fans and he loves the interaction that they can give to us and just have this great show that we can create together. So I, I was a fan first. And when I was asked if I wanted to, you know, be part of the roster, I, I was, I, didn't, I jumped, I was like, yes, I'll do it. And it's just, you know, I always have a saying that you can take the woman out of the ring, but you can't take the ring out of the woman. And so I have a love for this industry and I love performing. So uh, to be with Ali Lee is, it's great. I'm having a blast. I love the people I work with and I, I haven't looked back since. Lovely. It's, it's, it's so nice to hear because we've spoken to people who've said, you know, they've left companies miserable. They've not enjoyed what they've done after the industry is a horrible place and bitchy and so many enemies. But then, you know, we do occasionally hear lovely stories like that where people are just happy. And happy to be there in that environment was obviously i'm not saying i'm not asking you to say horrible things about wwe but would you say that, that, that there's more of a, a friendly environment is does everybody seem happier with like the creative freedom and that in AEW? is it yeah you know aw they are they do let the, the wrestlers have creative freedom you know there's a few things that they'll say okay we want you to talk about this or that or this is how we're gonna have the storyline play out 
but you know, to be able to do my first promo and Tony says, I asked Tony, I'm like, what do you want me to say? What is it? That, where do you want to go with this? He goes, well, you're Vicky Guerrero. Go do what you want to say. And I was just like, this is incredible. Like, I was just like, it's true. Like I get to, you know, speak what Vicky wants to say, you know, at that time. And um, it's just a lot of fun, but you know, with WWE, um, I gave them a year notice before I left, you know, and I, the people changed and a lot of the staff was changing. It was just getting, it was getting political for me and it, and just a lot of the, you know, the, the locker room and everything was just kind of, it wasn't what it used to be. And I just, I just didn't want to be there anymore. And I wanted to try new things. And, and after a year, they didn't, asked for me to come back and so we did the farewell match with Stephanie McMahon which I'm very grateful for and we had a great time and you know I I know that in my heart that I I did everything I could to try and make it work and uh you know people change and the storylines change so I got to leave with a lot of peace in my heart because I left with a with a good you know sense of you know respect and goodbyes for everyone yeah and we we, we so often see people leave WWE with with maybe n- not having their future planned out or not really having anything to go and it's very sort of up in the air where we're going to see them again if we're going to see them again but it's it's nice that you've already had that sort of security net you already had something going on especially with your um with your your medical side of things as well um was that yeah. did you sort of do that as like a, a security thing just in case well you know Chris I mean being the wife of Eddie and been in the business, you know, for 20 years before I even entered into it. A lot of my friends got fired or they left and with nothing in their pockets to fall back on. And so that was something that was really important for me. If I was going to get into the industry was that I had my college degree and that I had a backup plan. And so to be able to plan that out and, and to have the timing work out the way it did, um, it was really important for me. And I try and let all the young people that I talk to, you know, let them know that you can have this great, you know, career in the wrestling industry, but it's always important to save your money, you know, get your college degree, have a backup plan because when COVID hit, it was a perfect example of how people didn't even know what they were going to do, you know, when everything just shut down. And so with the medical industry, I was, I had the chance to be able to go into the medical field and use my, my degree, you know, to make a living. Um, you know, so it's just, it's really important that people just not focus just on wrestling, but to always have, you know, a trade or, um, an education to fall back on. Cause this, you never know what this industry can bring or any other job. Yeah. You've got to protect your future. I mean, in, in, in an industry like wrestling, injuries can just happen like that and it can all be yeah. taken away from you. So, so suddenly just one slip, one accident. Um, yeah. speaking of all the guys in, in the roster, of AEW, um, is there anybody, any of the younger guys that you've been particularly impressed with? I think, like, I really like Max Caster. Is there anybody that you'd like to work with in the future or manage in the future once maybe you're not done with Andrade? <laughs> you've, only just, you've only just joined him and I'm already trying to get you a new client, but... Um... I, I maybe started. Hold on, Chris. <laughs> no, um, you know, right now I'm, I'm also managing Nyla Rose, which has been... Yeah such a fun time for me to work with um you know this incredibly talented woman that is not only just serious in the ring but she's so funny backstage and i've grown to have a really great friendship with her um as far as like the younger guys that come in you know even the you know the ex WWE legends like mark henry and you know paul white um I am looking forward to interacting with them on the show. I think that's really exciting for me. But, you know, the younger guys, you have, um, you know, you have like Tay Conte and you have, uh, you know, Top Flight, which is, they're incredibly, you know, impressive. You have uh, Marco Stone, which I can't wait to work with. Uh, the Young Bucks, which I would love to rub shoulders with, you know, in a segment on uh, AEW. And then, you know, there's a uh, big swole and there's uh, Abaddon, you know, there's so many incredibly mm. talented people yeah. that have come from the Indies, you know, that are now in this television production that they've grown so much. And so to be able to interact with them and have matches and share my knowledge and experience, that has been like the highlight of my career because I want to share everything that I know to pass it on to them so they can continue, you know, their success. Yeah, absolutely. You you mentioned um, 
Big Show, Paul White and, and Mark Henry in there. What, what do you personally, as, as a part of the AW roster, you obviously know the management, you know all the guys, you know what they're there for and what they can bring to the company. What, what do you make of all the, you know, it's Twitter, let's be honest, it's, it's mostly Twitter. What do you make of all the people that constantly say, oh, AW have signed another ex WWE guy? You know, if, if you look at it, if you look at it from a different point of view, all of these ex WWE guys have worked elsewhere, not just WWE. So, you know, when they went to WWE, nobody was saying, oh, WWE have signed another yeah. wherever guy, have they? It only seems to be a problem when it's AEW signing on from WWE. But obviously, as a huge, huge, huge Chris Jericho fan, he's my greatest of all time. I can un- I can appreciate how much he has brought to the company, a new young company. Is it very much the same for a Big Show, for Mark Henry, for guys like that? Is it more about the experience that they can bring to the younger guys? I, I believe that. I think that, you know, it started with Chris Jericho, you know, and Cody Rhodes, you know, coming in as these legends to start AEW. And now you have Mark Henry and Paul White. Um, they, they do bring um, a, a legendary career, you know, with them. And so to be able to share that with AEW and to make the product even stronger and better, I think that's all advantage, you know, for AEW. And people tend to say, you know, well, WWE is like the big company, you know, and their ex is now. So now that AEW is going to get them. I, I don't think that I don't agree with that because anyone can go anywhere, you know, and so whether they pick AEW or Impact or Ring of Honor or New Japan, um, everyone needs to be happy. And so if these if this is where these gentlemen are happy at AEW and this is where they want to sign, just like I made that choice. Um, I think it, it should be seen as that we love our career and we love the wrestling industry. And so wherever we can, you know, be a part of I think that's important and that's what we should focus on because there's wrestling for everybody you know and it's not just because you get released from WWE or you don't want to be there anymore that that's it because there's a lot of promotions that can share the knowledge and and share all these incredibly talented superstars that want to work with them and I just think that it's it's a great um, way to you know have people go different places and the fans can enjoy their creativity there yeah and it's like with it's the same sort of thing when WWE do their batch of releases every year. Obviously, recently we've had two different batches of releases really yeah. close together. You know, you've got half the people who are saying, oh, it's disgusting. They shouldn't hoard so much talent. But I like to look at it from the viewpoint of, yeah, those people have been underutilized. But now think about the knowledge and the experience that they can take to what you would probably call smaller companies. Obviously, anywhere is compared to WWE, anywhere else is technically a smaller company because they're the big dog in town but imagine how much somebody like Andrade is the perfect example imagine if he went to Impact or Ring of Honor that knowledge he could bring of not just the in-ring but the production side and how do we do things that could that could help anybody really you know to add to that you know WWE's been like the you say the big dog of the wrestling industry but you know um with, with that being the, with that being said, um, the fans and, and even myself don't even know what the truth is at WWE of why they do things or what what the rumors are like you see on Twitter. You can read all kinds of posts of what the fans think and what the rumors are. And you know what? Just have to have respect for that one company. Just like we want the fans to have respect for AEW or for Impact or Ring of Honor. Everyone's just trying to survive, you know, and everyone's just trying to give the best product that they can. And I'm really proud of AEW. They, they went from a few members of the roster to now we have this full fleet of like these incredibly talented characters that, you know, create this great show on a weekly basis. And, and we have YouTube content. And I think that's just, it speaks volumes because WWE is not the only person around anymore. You know, you have a lot of competition. I think that makes for, for a great product because it keeps everyone on their toes and it keeps everyone evolving to better, you know, to a better product. So I think competition is good, you know, and it's, uh, it, it keeps me driven because I get to, I want to make myself better each week that the fans see me on TV. One of the, um, one of the things that always sticks out for me, obviously, I, I think quite a lot of people who know me on Twitter and know me personally know that the two big things for me are tag team wrestling, which I think AEW does 
incredibly well. So many great, great tag teams. I think you'd be, as a tag team, if you didn't want to go to AEW, you'd be crazy because every tag team match is pretty much always five-star classics in AEW. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. Um, and the other thing for me is also women's wrestling. I'm, I've always been a big advocate for the ladies, always wanted them to be used better, higher up the card, more than three-minute matches. I think one of I think it's safe to say one of the big criticisms of AEW has been the handling of the women's division in sort of like a year and a half. We've not really seen the women particularly too high up the card. We've not seen too many big, big feuds, big story-driven feuds until until quite recently with Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa and Big Swole getting involved and obviously Nyla Rose. I think it's also safe to say that the, the roster is starting to really, they're really starting to make waves now and they're starting to come into the conversation a bit more alongside um, Impact and NXT. What, what do you make of, of the current AEW women's roster? Are there any women that you'd like to see join? There's been a lot of talk of Tessa Blanchard and things like that, or, or are you just trying to sort of focus on what's there now and, and building that up? Do you, do you have much involvement with, with the ladies? Um, you know, as far as like, first of all, for the women's division at AEW, it was very small and now we have grown. And, and there was, you know, you could see that there was a lot of, you know, matches with the guys versus, you know, maybe one, one match, you know, for the women. But I think the women have worked really hard to where now you see two segments of women's, you know, matches going on in one, you know, dynamite. And then you'll see on dark and elevation that we have, you know, five, six, you know, matches that involve the women's division. Um, you know, Dustin Rhodes works every week with the women, you know, in the ring, we have training practices, you know, for the women to come out and, you know, they work on different things. Um, and, and I, and I love working with the character development with the women and, and just being kind of the, I guess like the den mom, you know, I kind of, these are my babies and I kind of, you know, shelter them, but you know, now uh, the women of all elite wrestling have really set standards. You know, you have Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa who had a main event match and they set another, you know, they, they cracked another level on the glass ceiling, you know, for what women could do, you know, as far as the main event match. And, and, you know, we're still working on storylines and we're still finding out, you know, how we can use the women in these strong storylines. And we have Nyla Rose and Britt Baker, and you have Allie the bunny who's just come and evolved yeah. herself so much in wrestling. And she's now connected with Matt Hardy. So I think it's just finding that right fit for different women to be on the show and to, uh, you know, be a part of, you know, different storylines. You have Anna Jay and Tay Conti who are associated with the Dark Order. And then you have me with Nyla and then now with Andrade El Idolo. So everyone's just trying to kind of find their fit. And we're, we're still young, you know, it's still a young company. But I think in the process, we're all just trying to give people these different connections and it's working really well. And um, yeah, so I think that, you know, it's just a matter of time that you can see more women's content come out and uh, you know, it's just, it's a work in progress. And I think that's the exciting part because we have so much to work with it. It's like a, you know, it's just like a candy store. We're like, who are we going to play with this week? And we pull different women out and um, you know, for me to be, you know, for us to work with Britt Baker and, and, Rebel, you know, that's been really fun too. And you have Diamante and Abaddon, like just incredibly talented women that want to be better on a weekly basis. That's what makes it exciting for us to, you know, be part of the women's division. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's as a fan, it's wonderful to see because obviously, like many, many other fans, I grew up during a time where we, we went from Trish and Lita main eventing Raw the first time. And that was huge. Yeah. That was such a, a monumental moment. And then within just a few years, it was bra and panties matches and Playboy things and all that kind of nonsense. And it was just a bit, it was disappointing to see. So it's it's wonderful to see how the ladies have, have sort of turned that back around again. And now yeah, we're seeing, think, seeing them in the main event quite often now. And I, I think it's that equality, you know, that a lot of women are, yeah. are asking for, you know, it's um, better pay and there's better spots on TV and women are asking you know to do ladder matches and cage matches and you know everyone's their voices are being heard and and they're being asked to get out of their comfort zone you know and do these incredibly you know difficult matches and i think that's what makes it great is that you know we're still we're still 
wanting more as far as the women's division and, and to have those opportunities to be in these different matches and, you know, at Brit and Thunder Rosa, you know, landing on thumbtacks, I thought was, you can never pay me enough to be on thumbtacks, but to sit there and applaud them, it was just, you know, like, this is what it's all about is they get the chance to prove themselves in this other aspect of the wrestling industry. And that's what's exciting. Yeah, and that's, I think that's what's so important as well, is that they're not just being put in those positions because it's the right thing to do. They're, they're being put there because they've earned it, they've shown yeah. that they deserve it. And they and want they it, go, yeah. Yeah, they want it. And when they go out, they, you know, they they show up. They don't just, they don't phone it in. They don't have a, a three-star match. You know, we've had two WrestleMania main events for the women now. As we said, we had the, um, the Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa match. All of them have been classics. All of them will go down in history as some of, of the best women's matches of all time. And I think what I what I enjoy about seeing the women in cage matches and Hell in a Cell matches is that they so often overshadow the men's. They they outdo the men. I don't know maybe if it's because we're not used to it yet, but obviously, hopefully, in time, we we will be we will be used. Yeah, to it. you know, you see, uh, Sheeta, you know, at AEW, you know, just lost the title to uh, Britt. But, you know, she carried it for a year and she represented the title so well. And she's such a beautiful person, even though she's a baby, whatever, you know, and, you know, not, a, you know, couldn't beat her. But it's OK, you know, but looking on outside in, uh, she was just incredibly uh, talented, you know, and, and she's still I mean, she's still going to evolve to this other, you know, character, you know, that she's going to work on. But it's all about, you know, the circle of life, so to speak, that everyone goes through a storyline, they learn from it, they get something, they get pieces from it, and then the next opportunity the women will get at AEW, they'll, they're going to take more pieces of the pie and just, it just gets better and better. And so, uh, you know, these women to sit there and, you know, and uh, talk to them in the locker room and to see them work and to, and to be involved with matches with them, this is what our love is, is to work together and make this great product for the women. Yeah, absolutely. You say, um, you mentioned working together and obviously that always, every time I think of Vicky Guerrero, as I said before, I think of all the great talent that you've managed. And um, it was only a couple of weeks ago that I had um, Ricardo Rodriguez on the show, another legendary manager, legendary valet. Um, and he spoke of, obviously, the names that you've been with have all been quite big characters in themselves, especially the likes of Edge and Dolph, loud, like larger than life, big, loud, brash characters. Ricardo was obviously famously with Alberto Del Rio for pretty much all of his his, his tap yeah. time in WWE. Um, and he spoke of how important it is to make sure, as a manager, you don't overshadow the, the wrestler that you're with. Obviously, you've got a very outlandish character yourself, very <laughs> loud and brash, and as you said, bitchy and, and all that kind of stuff. So is is it difficult is it difficult to be a manager sometimes, depending on who you're with? Because as I say, you don't want to. You don't want to be the focus. You want them to be the focus. So is that a hard thing to do being Vicky Guerrero? Um, you know, it's uh, when there's a, when Nyla had a big match at AEW, um, you know, against Sheeta or, you know, if we get to go against Britt Baker again. Um, you always want to be a part of something that's really, you know, great. If I get a little part of, you know, saying a promo or maybe helping her cheat in just a little way, I have to remember that it's not about me. I'm just like the, I'm just like the icing, you know, to this huge cake that's going to be in this ring for this great match. Um, and you have to know your role, you know, I'm, I'm just the manager, but at the same time, when they need me to be involved or they need me to speak or to be present for, a, you know, a certain spot, I have, I want to do it well and I want to do it on, in time. And I want to be, you know, my minute that I need to be involved, I'm going to do it at hundred percent. And then everything yeah. else, you know, I'll just be Vicky Guerrero in the background. But the spotlight is the wrestling. You know, that's what the fans want to see. They want to see this incredible match and they want to see a good psychology of the story happening. And if I can be a little part of that, that makes me happy because, you know, I mean, honestly, if I go out there and walk Nyla out and don't have anything to do for the whole match and they're having this incredible match, you kind of sit back going, gosh, I really just want to do something just a <laughs> little bit, you know, but there's a time and place. And sometimes it's not about the manager to get involved. It's about this brutal match. that's going to happen between, you know, two people. So you just have to, you know, know when the right time is to get involved in, 
And when the wrestling wrestlers need us, then that's when we say, okay, where do you want me? You know, and, and sometimes a little bit is more. And, and when I do that little bit to help the match, then I go, I go home happy because I was, I was a part of it. But either way, um, if I'm off camera or if I'm, you know, on the side of the ring, it's just being the best that I can be and do what I do. And if that adds to their, you know, to the ratings and to the camera work and the fans are enjoying it, then it's a good night, you know, and I'm happy to go home and know that I, I did a little bit to help out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, right. One thing that I really wanted to ask about, um, I know we've already mentioned Eddie and, and your time working together. Obviously you've, I think it was 2004 when we, when we first saw, saw you on, on screen. I think that was yes. the time was 2004. Yeah. Yes. Um, obviously, Eddie obviously very sadly passed in 2005, way too young. You you didn't have lots of time together on screen. Obviously, obviously you you were together while he was in the industry. That's that's a given. Right. But you you've been a mainstay really ever since then. I know you've had your your small times away here and there, and you you left WWE in 2014. But you've been in and around the industry for what? 17 coming up to 18 years roughly yeah, yeah. What, um, 16 years yes but active 16 years yeah 16 years it's a long time very very long time especially are you saying long that long. old chris are you no, is that no, what you're no, gonna no, find no. go no. ahead tell me i'm old see what happens <laughs> <laughs> you don't look a day over 30 honestly, honestly. Uh, nice one <laughs> there we go saved it i saved myself there yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, with, with you having been in and around the industry for so long, what what did Eddie? Did you learn any lessons from Eddie that you've taken forward that have helped you to sort of stay relevant and to be be in and around the industry for so long? Because it is such a cutthroat industry, isn't it? We see people disappear all the time, but sixteen years, as I say, especially for a manager, especially for a a valet. I know you wrestled a few times as well, but. But it, as I say, did, did you learn much from Eddie? Did anything that he taught you all those years ago help you that you still think about and le- use to this day? Yeah, you know, um, just a, a couple of things that, that come to mind is uh, remember my faith. You know, I, I pray every time I go out before a match or anything I'm going to do, I, I give everything to God and I give him the credit for my talent, my mind, my body being good, because without those little things, I wouldn't have made it this far. Um, and Eddie was very strong in his faith. And that was something that resonated with me even after he passed, you know, to keep that going and whatever I did, I was going to always give thanks to God. Um, and then also respecting the fans, you know, they're, these are the people that pay our, our, the tickets for, to watch us, but they feed our family. They help me pay my bills. And so when I see the fans, I always give respect to them by, you know, whether it's an autograph or to just hear what they have to say, or I try and, you know, answer my DMs on social media. And there's a few creeps. I mean, there's a few things that are, a few people that are kind of weird, but for the most part, my fan base is incredibly supportive and I, I can't do anything without them. And I always give them credit, you know, for me being this, this long into my legacy. That's something that's unheard of, especially in my, you know, for where I came from. So when I see fans on the street or they reach out to me or they order merchandise, I always, you know, am am just appreciative and I don't take it for granted. And that's something that's really important that Eddie always did was he never took it for granted because without them, there is no character, you know, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that happens to first God and then to them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think something that really speaks volumes for you and your character and shows how much the fans despite your character despite how much they hated you in the ring and on screen you can tell how much people love you because as i said before every time somebody from wwe goes to aw there's a lot of complaints a lot of criticisms oh they're washed up oh they're ex wwe we got that with mark henry we got that with big show we got that with jericho i don't remember that happening with you i i only remember genuine happiness that that you were back on screen and that, that was beautiful to see. I think that shows that legacy that you've built. People are just happy to see Vicky Guerrero, even if you're being horrible, being horrible, <laughs> being a bitch and breaking, take, tearing people down. I think people are just happy to see you on screen and, you know, the energy that you bring. And obviously I think like you said before, right at the start, it reminds people of Eddie and we all 
I mean, obviously, you must miss Eddie more than anybody, but we all desperately miss Eddie. Yeah, you know, that's um, that's so true. You know, and, and when fans, you know, they see me at signings or at Comic-Cons or, you know, whatever we're doing, they're like, you're so nice. Like, how can you be so mean in the camera? I'm like, that little red light turns on and I just, I you know, I turn into my character. But that's when you can't insult the fans. You know, the fans yeah. know that, there's a personal Vicky and then there's the business Vicky. And, you know, I have fun with the fans when I'm signing, you know, if they want a video, you know, they want me to yell at them, they excuse me, or they want, you know, just anything in character. That's what they pay for. And if they, if that's why that person comes to my table and says, this is what I would love from you. I'm going to do it because this is what made me famous. And, and this is where their hard earned money comes to these shows and says, this is what I want from you. And I'm just like, sure. You know, and I, I still get very humbled and just, um, I get surprised, you know, when I have this line at my table, because I just, I thank God because people really yeah, still yeah. want to see me. And that's just, uh, it's just humbling. And it's very, it's a blessing every day that I get to keep doing what I love. Yeah, absolutely. You must be excited to see fans back in arenas now as well soon. Yes. We, back we out have, on the road like, as well. Yeah, we've had live audiences at um, in Jacksonville where we tape, you know, and we have live dynamite, um, you know, for at Daly's place. And so uh, to hear the fans still boo me and hate me, uh, that's what you just want to hear. I mean, the day they stop booing, I'm just going to be like, OK, it's time to call it quits. <laughs> but I mean, that's what they want. You know, they want to see that, you know, Vicky Guerrero, you know, you know, march out to the ring and insult Justin Roberts or, you know, help Nyla cheat or whatever. And that's just, I'm having a great time. And so when the fans have a good time, then I'm, I'm happy to oblige. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that, like I say, that really resonates. We can see how much you're enjoying being on TV. We can see how much fun you're having. I have had a blast talking to you today, Vicky. Um, yeah. Honestly, this is mad. Absolutely crazy for me. I've only been doing this for about seven months or so now. Um, and not, not to be, sort of, you know, horrible to any of my my early guests, but to, to have had you on the show and to hear stories about Eddie and to hear stories about AW, it's been, it's just been an absolute privilege and an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining hey. me. Oh my gosh, Chris, thank you for inviting me. I know we've, we've worked hard to get together on our timing to, to interview, but uh, I wish you success and, and lots of love and be safe over there. And hopefully we'll be able to meet face to face when we go tour in the yes. UK. Absolutely, absolutely. I would love that. Um, before you go, Vicky, where where can we find you on social media? Where can we find you on on YouTube and things like that? Uh, gosh, you can go to Twitch, and I'm at Excuse Me BG. I am on Twitter at Vicky Guerrero. On Instagram, I'm at Guerrero under slash Vicky. Um, my autobiography is getting ready to come out in about six to eight months. It's life before and after Eddie, which I'm really proud of the okay. project. Um, and then uh, you can go to my website, which is VickyGuerrero.net, and it has all my merchandise, and you'll see some of Eddie's stuff on there that they can purchase as well. Wonderful. Will the um, the autobiography, will that be available everywhere? Will it be Amazon? And, and... It will. I'm going to hit everywhere, and uh, I'm going to be everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a process with COVID just because things have slowed down so much. But New York just opened up, and that's where all the publishing companies are, and my editor's working on that. So... I'm just crossing fingers that we get going with this because I'm getting impatient. <laughs> <laughs> I will a thousand percent be picking that up. Absolutely. I can't wait to read that. Um, guys, guys, that's it. That's a wrap for today. Thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, you know where to find me. You know where to find the podcast. It's all in the description, all in the about section on, on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, take care. And Vicky again, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys.